Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Roundtable. My name is Sean Fay Wolf. My name is Alyssa Vitello. And I'm Asa Martin. We've got another great series of topics up for discussion tonight. A wide variety from arts to entertainment to politics to culture and everything in between. We're going to be talking about it all right here tonight on this 20 Somethings TV. <laughs> specifically a uh, uh, policy proposal by one of the uh, front runners in the 2020 Democratic uh, primary, that being Miss uh, Elizabeth Warren. Um, her suggestion is basically a plan that um, is in the spirit of uh, making it easier to afford college. She's got um, a plan to try and uh, use federal money to wipe out a uh, substantial degree of student debt, specifically to those from lower income families, and also to um, essentially, you know, make college a bit more of a uh, public service in that regard. So I guess, um, you know, let's just get a talk on the, about the principle on this. What do you guys think about free college just as a principle by itself? Free college as a principle by itself, I feel like it's a good effort to try to resolve a big issue in our nation. Obviously, college is not cheap. We all know that. Um, but I don't think the solution is making it free because the basic will, the basic economic principle is that when you lower the cost of something dramatically from this high, high cost to zero, the value is going to go down as well. And I don't think that's fair to any of us who have been paying already, if you know what I mean. But also, what about the people that n need free college tuition in order to get an education? Because this day and age, they, you can't really get anywhere without a degree. Like that's been the big thing that most people have been focusing on. And it's not like they're not getting money. Like you said that, you know, it lowers the cost if the, you know, if it's cheaper, but the money is still going to the college. It's just going to be federally provided rather than all coming out of, you know, out of pocket. I would say that community college is a great resource, though, that a lot of people overlook. I think a lot of people treat college as more of a label. You know, you go to the big name colleges just to have that label, but the truth of the matter is that community college provides the same education. So if it's the get education you really want, go to a community college. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Well, I mean, that's, you know, that's not entirely true. A community college obviously is a great resource, you know, it's, and the, the opportunities there are something that, you know, should not be understated. But at the same time, you know, having, I think if you are, you know, work really hard and you have, you know, the best grades in a specific topic, if you want to go to a college, your options shouldn't be limited just because you don't have the money. I think that you should, I mean, I think we can all it agree. It should be by how much you work, how much your, how great your grades yeah, are, you know? How qualified you are. How qualified you yeah, are, yeah. exactly. That's what scholarships are for, though, when you think about it that way. Yeah, but scholarships <laughs> can't cover everything. No, that it's is true, like that is true. But you do have to work hard. you got to look for those scholarships, the grants. you got to put in the work. I mean, and then I definitely have, know that you have to be lame. lucky enough for them to pick you. Right. They can't give scholarships to everybody. No, they definitely can't. But I don't think taking the money out of taxpayers' wallets in order to fund everybody's education is the solution. I think we need to look a little bit harder harder for something for so it's fair for everybody maybe there's a balance in between yeah you know something where our tuition is a little bit less so we're not getting ro loads of student debt right don't get right. me wrong the system is broken I will absolutely yeah. admit <laughs> that. And, and if someone who is in favor of this in principle even I'll say it's like in order to do something like this any plan is gonna have to have a lot of fine text mm -hmm. that really helps to understand but uh, we'll see if Elizabeth Warren is the one who's able to uh, you know parts all that out and make it work going forward. And speaking of going forward, we have several other topics that we're going to be discussing tonight. Uh, if you guys aren't going to want to miss those, so stick around. All right, welcome back. Uh, this segment, we got some very exciting news coming from the world of sports, uh, particularly a team from this general part of the country, the Boston Bruins, who, quite excitingly, have made it to the uh, second round of the playoffs. So, uh, yeah, it's obviously pretty big news. So what do we uh, what do we think about that? 
Well, um, as a uh, avid Bruins fan, you know, I've been a Bruins fan forever. Uh, I can really say it's uh, really exciting. You know, uh, my 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 inner Bruin is really, you know, just coming out of me. I I definitely very deeply follow hockey. I definitely have seen every single game this season and I've also definitely always seen every single game ever and I know the I know the whole lineup of the Bruins uh, and I, I'm exactly the expert that these people need. Yeah, honestly just by looking I can just sense the passion I can just sense all of the passion oh, yeah. Yeah. Bru brewing inside yeah. you. Oh yeah, yeah. I you uh. know I'm definitely you know I'm a big Boston sports guy I'm definitely a red <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Yankees fan. No! I don't Boston sports. I mean, like Celtics and like you know Bruins can, can take it because like I don't follow hockey or basketball and they're pretty dope. But Pats too much, too many rings. Too uh, many. Too many rings. Red Sox. Twenty-seven World Series is over here in the Yankeesville. Just saying. Put another. No, 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 no. Boston sports are doing so well. We're like the best right now. It's so awesome. And I want the Bruins to win so I can go to another parade. <laughs> That's cool. 27 World Series, New York Yankees. All right, all right, all right. What do you think about the Bruins? Um, I don't. I don't follow hockey. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I hope they win. Have you gone to any of the parades? Uh, not like really. Like for any I'm Boston sports at all? Not really. I, I just sort you of. You guys are missing out. I know. Well, like, I don't, I don't, like, I'm not going to go to the Red Sox parade because oh. I hate the Red Sox. Okay. Burning passion. Oh, why, right. why is there a burning passion? Because I'm a Yankees fan. We don't get it along. I respect Red Sox fans, but a lot of Red Sox fans don't respect me, so I have to unrespect them in return. And that's just the way the world works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, those are our thoughts on the hockey and the Bruins. <laughs> Next segment. <laughs> Hi, my name is Clara Crawford. I really enjoy singing at the 193 Coffee House open mics that are on Thursday nights, usually throughout the semester, every other week. It's a great outlet to express yourself, and I highly encourage everyone to go. I will be singing The Night We Met by Lord Huron next. Oh, 
I'll take me back to the night we met I had all the night most of you Some and now none of you Take me back to the night we met I don't know what I'm supposed to do Haunted by the ghost of you to the night we Welcome back to 20-somethings TV. So let's get right back into it. This is LJ. Yeah. And Mason, let's get it started. So our topic today is a little scandalous action going on, but not here in the States. We're bringing it over to Britain, to UK, where Prince William has been accused of cheating on Kate Middleton. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> but why is these rumors coming up? Well, so what had happened recently is that Princess Kate and Han Hanbury, the Marconius of Chalmondeli. <laughs> A plus for effort. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> even the article says it's hard to read. Something anyway, <laughs> those two have been great friends for a while, family friends, but all of a sudden, now Kate wants nothing to do with her and her husband. So it's, it's brought up a little, you know, rumors. It's Something like, well, so hey, cheap. what the heck happened? So and cheap. it's not only that, but they've also talked about British legal team. action going on between the family of Kate Middleton and Prince William and the Hanburys. So, mm -hmm. you know, cheating's a bad thing. What do you guys think about it? This the whole situation cheating in general. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, you know, I've unfortunately in my life been on both sides as a cheater and a cheaty. It's not something I was proud of. It's not something I'm ever going to be proud of. It's something I'm truly ashamed of. It happened when I was a lot younger and honestly just came from a place of like, you know, I didn't want to be alone with myself, so I did anything in my power to kind of like cover up those feelings. But then, then it always comes around. I always say this, if you cheat, it's going to come back to you because then I got cheated on and I knew it was going to be bad, but boy, I did not think it was going to be that bad. <laughs> but yeah, cool. definitely <laughs> taught me a lot. I mean, I, again, full of regrets, but again, I was just young and stupid and you grow and sometimes you gotta learn the hard way. Now being the one cheated on, did you have any suspicions beforehand that you knew about cheating? Kind of like what's going on right now, all about these rumors? I mean, like a little bit. I guess, I don't know, that whole relationship was a mess and a half, so there was always kind of like, I can definitely yeah, relate to that. No I feel just. like we've all had that one relationship where you're just like, oh yeah. And I think the worst part is when you find out through like an outside source. Mm -hmm. Like who knows what's going on here, if it's true or not or whatever. But if she found out through like the tabloids, if it was true, imagine how awful that feels. I mean, I know like I've found out through other people when I've been cheated on, mm -hmm. I'm just like, I did Ew. too, yeah. <laughs> like that sucks, it's the worst. Oh, it's absolutely terrible. I, Cause I knew cause when I was dating somebody, I was cheated on and I actually knew too but he kind of persuaded me to keep going. He's like, oh, promise I'll change, but he kept doing it, and oh, yeah. it wasn't good at all. <laughs> I like, I don't know, I did it for a while, and I came clean, like, face to face with her because I felt really, really bad, and that's the part I don't understand, too, for, like, people who still continue to cheat and don't learn anything from it. Like, how do you not, how do you look at yourself, honestly? Because I felt so horrible about it that it was like, I didn't even think I had the capacity to do it, but. Well, and seventeen year old did. <laughs> more of the story is don't cheat, especially if you know you're the royal family. It'll um, come back. <laughs> it'll come back and bite you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's all we have. So we're gonna go to the next segment. And welcome back to Twenty Something CV. I'm here with Alyssa Patello and Keith Brown. So today we're gonna play a fun and lovely game. True Confessions, which we totally stole from The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. But it's okay, because we're giving him credit. So basically, if you haven't heard of True Confessions, what happens is one person will speak from one of their envelopes that the other two decide, and it will be a statement that they have done in their life, or whatever it may be. And then the other two people 
have 60 seconds to ask them and grill them with questions to figure out if what they said is a true statement or a lie statement. A lie statement. A lie, a lie statement. statement. <laughs> well, listen, I, we just go lie with Lie statements are my favorite type. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, who do we want to go first? Uh, you. Mm -hmm. you. Me? You. Yeah. Okay. So I have two envelopes right in front of me, one on the left, one on the right. Okay. Okay. Which one? <laughs> I, I don't know okay. why I it's said okay. envelopes. It's all right. I, we got it. Uh, who right. would you go ahead and pick, you can pick one. You want you pick ladies one. first. Um, that one. Left one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was once chased by three dolphins. Where were you, oh, <laughs> where were you when you were chased by dolphins? Florida. In what body of water? Uh, I don't know, we're in a little dock area. In the ocean? No, it was kind of like, we were in Bradenton, Florida. How, and yeah, all right. How long were you chased by these dolphins? Uh, literally quick seconds. Were you in like a raft? No. Were you free swimming? We're, you were no. free swimming? No. Okay. We, we were on a dock. Do you know you're not supposed to rub the dolphin in, in a certain area <laughs> or that will try and get on top of you? Well, oh, that's not a question. Well, it's um, <laughs> so do you, uh, how old were you? Uh, 14, 15. Why were, were you, you there? I was. I w yes, I was scared. Uh -huh. I ran away uh -huh. as they were coming at me, and I was there because I was with my grandfather and his friend fishing. Sounds legit. He's ready. Like he, he has all he these said answers. He, wasn't, he ran away, wasn't he? In the yeah. ocean. How do you dolphins chase you if you're on land? I told you I was on a dock. <laughs> how do dolphins chase you when you're I on a dock? I don't know. I don't know. Well, like, what, how did you know they were chasing you? Oh, oh time's up. God. Time's up. I have to wake up now. <laughs> my alarm sounds. So, uh, what do, what do we say, what, uh, um, Alyssa? I'm going to say... Is it true or false? I'm going to say it was true. I'm going to say it's false. False? Well, Keith, you lost because it's true. Damn it. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> How right, do you cool. get chased when you're so, on a dog? So yeah, here's, tell here's the whole story. Yeah, here's, tell the, here's the whole story. So what happened, my grandfather, me, and his friend all went fishing. Uh, and when my grandfather's friend was fixing up a new line, his old line got caught and just went out into the ocean. Uh, pole still there, so he went and grabbed the pole, started reeling it in, and then a dolphin comes flying up in, into the air, like doing Sea World tricks, and the line we can see is moving with it. So we had caught a dolphin. Now it does oh it a wow. couple more times, and then the line breaks. And then all of a sudden we see one dolphin fin come up from the water and start coming towards the dock, and two other dolphin fins coming with it right towards us. Wow. And so I like booked it down the dock, running away from these dolphins. Hmm, interesting. Pretty cool. At least it wasn't sharks. You're right. That would be terrible. <laughs> right. That would be terrible. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Sharks are All bad. All right. Uh, who next? Uh, who next? Me? You, yeah, you go picked. for it. Uh, and She'll Keith. pick. Should I pick? Yeah, you pick. Okay, I'm going to pick this one. That oh, one? Do don't I, I don't look you. at it. Yeah. All right. Don't look at it. Okay. So, on the Harrington and Hollywood trip, you know, that trip that the school took, like people got to go on it in California, I got to go on this year. Uh, I came down with the flu, and I threw up right before going on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Um, All right, grill me. What kind of flu did you get? I think it was strain B. <laughs> <laughs> was it bird flu? No. Pig what flu. was your temperature? No. My temperature was, I think, at 100. What did they do for you? Uh, they gave me Tamiflu. Did you go to the doctors while you were there? No, I did not. No. No. Did you get a flu shot? No, I did not. Mm -hmm. So you threw up and then you went on the Ellen show and you didn't throw up during the show? No. Did you go But on? I didn't have anything to eat that day. So like during the show I was like, <laughs> like what dead. did you what did you eat the night before? Um I had French onion soup, which is disgusting. It was no, a really bad idea. Make anyone throw up. I hate that. <laughs> so why'd you why'd you eat it if you hate it? I don't know. I never had it before, and I didn't want something like. Like I'm in California. Let's yeah, try something let's so California. French onion soup. Yeah, French onion. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Where, so where did you throw up? Uh, it was in the parking garage. Ugh. Mm. Did the other people? Oh damn it! I want to ask a question. So true, fly. True. I'm gonna say it's false. I'm gonna say it's lie. I don't think you threw up. It's true. It is? Yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I had the flu um, before I even went on the show. Uh -huh. Like right before I like flew out and it was awful. Um, but the Tamiflu is actually what made me throw up because oh. I had it on an empty stomach. And I didn't know that you're not supposed to do that. 
apparently. So I had the Tamiflu, and yeah. How do you get Tamiflu? Like, where do you? This is My doctor. Oh, you had to c call yeah. somebody and say, "I think I have the flu. Send it to me." Yeah. Or give it to me. I had yeah. like an, a regular appointment, and they were like, "Oh yeah, you have the flu. <laughs> so yes. we're gonna give you Tamiflu." Yeah. Yeah. All right. Being now it's Keith's turn. Is horrible. Okay. <laughs> where do you want to pick? So uh, All right, you yeah, pick. I'll pick. Uh, are so we not reading the other ones? Once no, we, do we this? only no. we only do one. I wish oh. we could. We but can we just read what they are after we're done? Uh, sure. Okay. Sure. If you'd like, I'd like to know oh. since it's the last time we're going to be doing this and all. No. Uh, so make it start. Okay, pick one. I'm going to go with the right one. My, my, you're right. You're right. Um, an R and B pop star sung to me in the men's restroom. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Which which R and B pop star was yeah. this? Luther Vandross. Who the hell is that? <laughs> All right, which men's restroom? Where? It was in a movie theater in New York City. Okay. What movie theater? Wow. Uh, it was, uh, I don't remember. I think it was in Lincoln Center. Huh. Why did he start singing to you in the restroom? Because I went to the bathroom and I went to the sink to wash my hands and I looked in the mirror and I said, I think I know that guy and I think he recognized me looking at him through the mirror like this guy recognizes me yeah. and so he started singing I think just to be like yeah I'm that guy you think I am. What, what? song did he sing? To he you? just yeah. started like doing a little riff it wasn't really a song. Mm. Can right. you play out the tune? Can, like, can you I don't do really remember exactly what he sang Doesn't but we were both it. we were both we were both washing our hands at the sink and we mm -hmm. and we made eye contact through the mirror. He's dead now. Oh, yeah, I so had when nothing did this to happen? do with it. When yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably, I would guess like I was out of college, so probably like 96. 96. All right. What do, you, what do you think? I don't know, because I never heard of that guy before. <laughs> <laughs> and then. You can Google him. I think. <laughs> it's a lie. I think it's true. It's a lie. I think it's true. You're a liar. It's true. What? Oh my gosh. Yeah, you can look him up. <laughs> he was fat. <laughs> he was fat Luther at the time. He was like at one point he was thin Luther and then he was fat Luther. He was fat Luther. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. I just yeah. ran out of the bathroom because I didn't really know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. That's awesome. Now you wanted to read over our other ones. Yeah. yeah. What did you write? So yeah. wait, you were you gave us a true one. I gave, so it was yeah. your fake one. My fake one was. We all get true ones. I once threw up on a famous YouTuber. Oh. What were you going to so say? Who, if we to said me. who was it, what would you say? Well, I would have said Jack's up the guy because I've met him. Oh. And you have no idea. I don't know. No who idea. <laughs> I would have said Luther Vandross and you don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I've met him and I've met him so many years. Oh, so, really? like, I think I would have been great to be like, hey, the first time I met him, I threw up on him. And okay. Just out of nerves. That's you know? funny. And what was your fake one? Uh, my fake one was I know the recipient of this year's Academy Award Best Picture and Best Screenplay. Same guy because I filmed his daughter's wedding. Oh. And it's false because I filmed his niece's wedding. Oh. oh. That's <laughs> tricky. Yeah. I wrote, I have performed stand-up comedy routines for ch all children's shows. I just made that up. <laughs> I don't know where I got that from. I, oh, yeah, I got so really imagine. confused because I wrote two true ones down, and then I was like, <laughs> no, I need to make a fake one. And then I That's made great. that one up. Maybe you should do stand-up comedy. Uh, for all, for just for children. Just, just for, for children. children. I'd probably yeah. be fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> all right, Keith. Thank Thanks, you for joining fun. us for this yeah. game. Oh, the lovely True Confessions, our own adaptation, and we'll see you guys in the next segment. Bye. And welcome back. Up uh, next on the topic, and uh, last for that matter, we actually have a discussion coming out of the world of popular music. Uh, once again, having to do with our dear old Ariana Grande as well as uh, Beyonce. So, uh, yeah, any story involving those two together is going to have uh, quite a lot to talk about. Uh, <laughs> would you like to tell us more? Lisa? So, Ariana Grande, my absolute fave, headlined Coachella this year, and a little bit of controversy was stirred up because someone, a fan, right at the front, threw a lemon at her while she was performing, like mid-singing, like threw a lemon at her. And people are saying it's um, a little message because she was paid twice the amount of Beyonce to perform at Coachella, and people are a little upset about it. I can oh. imagine. It's just a very sour situation from what I'm looking at it. Oh, yeah. It's also pretty sour. juicy, though, you got to admit. So, yeah. I mean. uh, uh. I'm just, you know, I don't think there should be any real beef between this right now. Uh, yeah. Because part of the whole situation, why the fan was angry, was 
like you said, the pay, mm -hmm. but because Ariana just did the same show that's kind of on her tour that she's already doing. So it, they were mad because all they got was the same show. But what do you expect from somebody that's already on tour to perform another show and have time to rehearse that while they're on tour? Yeah, it's like putting this stuff together, it's not like easy. It, it kind of makes sense that, you know, if you've got like, especially Ariana Grande, <laughs> Whatever, however you pronounce her name, Ariana Grande. Think about it. She dropped two albums like back to back, so she's you know she's just got a ton of you know she's just been doing like nonstop promotion she's lately. Yeah. So Busy girl to try yeah. and figure yeah. out what to do with Coachella on top of that. Like I, I completely understand why they would have to reuse some of that rather than you know creating something new. Yeah, I mean she's on top of the world right now, like with the two albums and then like the number one singles and everything's like charting and it's so crazy. And I mean. Yeah, you gotta you gotta pay the performer what they want. I mean, nobody knows the negotiation, like what went on, and people are just way too angry about everything. Right. It's <laughs> yeah. like you know, Beyonce. I I mean, I kind of understand because like Ariana is like the hottest superstar in the world, like right now, this moment. You know, right now, this is the moment of Ariana Grande that we're living in right now. <laughs> So it makes sense that they would, you know, have to pay extra to, like, you know, pull her away from, I guess, opportunity costs. She's performing here. She's not doing something else. Right. Whereas Beyonce, when they, you know, that wasn't exactly a peak time for her when they got her. I mean, it's Beyonce, so obviously she's still a massive superstar. There is, right. She doesn't really have, like, a down period, but it wasn't, like, a particularly high period for her either. So I, I guess I, it kind of makes sense to me. I, I, it, I, I, it's all about the timing because, you know, Beyonce was kind of more popular couple years ago. Now it's Ariana. So now she's more of a top star than Beyonce, so obviously she'd right. get I, paid. I, I, I would say top star. It's just like Beyonce what? is be like I'm not for the even, time right now. I'm not even like a huge fan of Beyonce, but I will admit like she is just like she's icon. Ariana Grande is becoming an icon. Beyonce is an icon. But can we agree on something? I don't think Beyonce is hurting for that extra money. Right. So I, mean, <laughs> I get the principle of the thing, but she's not hurting for that extra money. So yeah. let's move on. <laughs> yeah, let's move on to the end of the show because this is our last segment of the night. So uh, we're going to wrap it up today. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us here today on this show. Um, we had some great discussions. I hope you guys really enjoyed watching them. Um, we'd like to thank our special guests and our performers for being on the show. It's really awesome. And uh, yeah, we'd also just like to say goodbye to you guys. So I'm Sean Faye Wolf. I'm Melissa Vitello. And I'm Mason Martin. And this is from the Roundtable on 20 Somethings TV, signing off. Mm -hmm.